What's up, everybody? It's Mods for Visalia MMA Gear and Visalia MMA Gear of Hanford. Check it out. Eddie's having a special. Just purchase any Kane Vlasquez walkout shirt and receive a free Kane Vlasquez poster. For a limited time with any purchase of Kane Vlasquez walkout shirts, Eddie's going to hook you up with a poster. And don't forget, tell them Mods sent ya. Tonight's edition of the Real MMA Hour is brought to you by Real Water. Check out Real Water at drinkrealwater.com. Tonight's Real MMA Hour was filmed live at the Press Box Sports Grill. Check out the Press Box Sports Grill. Cage Ready will be there for UFC 127. Just $10 in advance, $15 the day of the event. What's up, everybody? It's Mods Cage Radio going out live from the press box here in Fresno, California. Tonight's Real MMA Hour brought to you by Real Water. All right, tonight's special guest, Christian Printup, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy I like to call the sensation of innovation, my man. Welcome to the show. How's it going? Good, man. Thank you. Thank you. This is great to be here again. Okay, fantastic. Now, uh, You've got a bunch of events always happening. I don't know, like, what the hell you're doing from one week to the next. One week, it's Playboy Fight Night. It's some naked women wrestling in oil. It's boxing. It's, my God. So where do we start, my man? Because, I mean, you have so many things going on. I have I'm no all, idea even where to begin. Place. Yeah, no, I'm definitely all over the board. Um, you, you know, yeah, I mean, we have, you know, the Playboy Energy Fight Night stuff is going on and, uh, you know, the Fight Night at the Mansion. Um, uh, you know, we just finished that great WOW event. Of course, you're the, uh, you know, the, the ring announcer extraordinaire, and that was a lot of fun. So, I, and I have, um, you know, high hopes for, for WOW as a brand. Um, I, I just, I like to stay busy, man. I like to do different things. I have the, uh, I guess you could say I'm, I'm sort of afforded the luxury of, of being able to be creative right now, at, you know, basically just freelancing. So, okay. Um, and I, and I want to, I wanna, especially in this economy, everything's so kind of distressed and depressed, and people want to be entertained, but I, I want to take a chance while I still have the energy and the ability um, to try to bring some different types of events to people, create them, and whether they work or they don't work, you know, you don't know until you try it. So right. that's basically my, my motive in 2011 is just continue to try to, to think out of the box okay. and, and, and bring different types of events to people and definitely uh, try to give as much bang for that proverbial buck as possible. Right. So, and, and, and when you have the ability or the opportunity to, to make girls take most of their clothes off, oh my God. it never really hurts. No, there's nothing wrong with that. That, uh, that was a spectacular event now. One thing that I did learn about that by recording that and, and uploading it to YouTube is MMA has no value whatsoever, <laughs> okay? Nobody cares about MMA. Zero buddies, okay? There are a couple of videos on there that have three and 4,000 hits each, and I'm just like, what right. the hell am I doing? Why am I even bothering going out to talk to uh, fighters <laughs> when all I have to do is every couple of months roll to one of your events, take some photos and some videos of uh, women nobody even knows, right. <laughs> but they get way more uh, way more play than anything that I got set up. So right, right. Well, I you know it's I was just called the Don King of of oil wrestling. <laughs> nice. And I, th <laughs> I think I you don't I even I have kinda, the hair for it, I but I, I mean, like okay, you know, I do like that. I might, but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've, I've done MMA and I'll continue to do MMA. You know, straight MMA and straight boxing and and things like that. But you know, being able to to create and develop something like Wow. Um, is really satisfying because you, you know I'm able to, to to change the definition of entertainment on a certain level and, and it really just brings something different and fun and I tell you I have high hopes for that brand um, okay. I see it growing I've had some 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 really really fun discussions lately um, with regards to Wow okay and uh, you know be on the lookout for it and okay it's it's definitely just going to continue to grow and people might laugh at me but you know if I can pay my uh, child support nah. alimony i don't give a fuck who laughs at me exactly i mean like i mean it could be worse it could be fake wrestling i mean you know then then, it, then we could totally make fun of yeah, you but that they, shit makes a lot of money so those girls get down too and that's another thing i was going to talk about like i went out there <laughs> thinking you know a little dainty <laughs> <laughs> no man like these chicks were like the best was uh was uh mark de la cruz's girl uh courtney before the event, he's teaching her cage walking techniques and whatnot. <laughs> All right, and then push your breasts into her. Push push your breasts into me, and I'm like, wow. 
Is this really happening? Yeah, so Dela Cruz was like, I mean, he, he wanted $1,000 more than she did. That's all I'm saying, all right? He was teaching some cage walking texting. I was like, really? Is it going to get she this crazy? She almost pulled the triangle off, too. Man, she did. Know, and so. then the the the, uh, the oiling and all that. I mean, uh, BJ Penn thought that was messed up, but uh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, she did almost pull the triangle off. I was I was very impressed with that. Um Cat is kind of evil. Like I thought she was kind of a nice girl and one of it. Oh my god! Like, what do you mean evil, she, bro? She was just grabbing chicks and just throwing them to the ground. Like what? Yeah. And I was just like, wow. But uh, some aggression there. Really yeah. aggressive. Like I can't believe it. And then Chauncey, I didn't know anything about Chauncey. Is she like a firefighter or something? You know, you know what? Yeah, Chauncey. I I, I just learned that as I sort of became reintroduced to her. Chauncey okay. actually, she um. She was a ring card girl for us back in the old WEC oh, okay. days, a long time ago. Um, and and um, then I sort of lost touch with her for okay. years. Um, and then through Facebook, of course, right. everyone, you know. Facebook you, you, rules. Facebook just links everyone yeah, from does. the past. So uh, through Facebook, I was reintroduced to her. And, um, yeah, found out that she went to the Fire Academy and she, she's getting that going. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I didn't know that she actually, a little backstory um, to her, because she, she, you know, she beat Courtney in the finals. Right. Was she used to actually train with Mark Dela Cruz. Really? Back in the day, back with oh, Mark I didn't Dela know Cruz that. and Tom Owens and Mike Sir and and uh, those old, uh, uh, the Jabushi. Uh, you know, wow. You remember the, the yeah. Jabushi might have been, you know, yeah. back then, but um, they had some really, really, you know, great grapplers and stuff, so um, they still do. Uh, obviously, they're all just kind of split now, but. So, so would you say so she uh, some, she Mark De La Cruz is like the uh, the Gracie family of women's <laughs> oil wrestling? I didn't even know that. There's, <laughs> their shit is just breaking left and right tonight. Wow. So Yeah, you might say that. <laughs> that is totally <laughs> awesome. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Is there any uh, – Is have, do you have a date set on uh, on another event for the, for that yet? Um, what WOW is going to return in August. Okay. It is going to return in August. and um, Outside. It's going to be an outdoors. Oil. Outdoor, outdoor show with a lot of women, a lot of baby oh, oil, a lot of beer. Nice. A lot of music. And, and because this is America, and that's how we fucking roll. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, will this be like the Sacred Circus where you're going to have the bands play and the oil wrestling? No, no, no. Not, okay. Not, not really. So um, Sa- Sacred Circus is like MMA bands and oil wrestling would you say is Sa- that sacred circus uh i don't know what i really didn't know it was so what, fun bro i don't even know what it was just honestly. bring bubbles back i don't care what the <laughs> hell you do just bring back topless ring card girls with duct tape pasties <laughs> it's a safe bet that you'll see them as wow again so. yeah, pretty happy about that dot com so all right um definitely wow if you guys didn't check it out you should check it out that's a good time I, what tickets were only 20 bucks like um. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tickets were only yeah. twenty bucks. Good times. And then they had a an after party. I saw some of those photos. That just looked ridiculous and whatnot. Yeah. And you know, it, you know what's what's good about the tickets. You know, these girls they're competing for a cash prize, obviously. Right. But if they don't win, they don't they don't make any. You know, they don't, right. they don't make any cash. So, uh, and when people buy tickets from them, it, that, that, right. some of that money goes in their pockets. So okay, so that's good. good. Yeah. And they're not wearing any pockets when they come out to this event. So. No, what you do is you you uh you double sided tape and then you just slap <laughs> just, just slap it on a ticket right on there. Right, right on there. <laughs> All right, now uh, you keep uh putting out uh something about boxing and whatnot. You're gonna force me to talk about boxing tonight. So <laughs> I, I I saw I think this you're, event. You're a closet boxing fan, I man. used to be, my man, and then like what turned you off. I honestly yeah. it was it was uh, Pernell Whitaker versus uh Taylor. Chavez, oh, oh yeah, okay. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pernell Whitaker beat the shit out of him, and I lost five hundred dollars because the judges said otherwise. So it, that left a bad taste in my mouth. And then, I mean, you probably have a lot more history growing up watching Ali, Frazier, you know, Larry Holmes, shit like that. Like, you know, I, I I watched a little bit of that stuff. My dad wasn't too much into boxing, but then like when Tyson came around, like I mean, we were all in golf. We'd have keg parties, and all right. the guys would come over. We'd all pitch in. We'd you know we'd pay for the pay per view, and like it was a big deal. And then when Tyson went away, like said at all of our parties, we didn't get together. It wasn't you know the boys and I anymore. And that's kind of what MMA has done for me. It brought all my all my buddies back together. Now we get on the couch and right. drink and think that we're 20 again and <laughs> you know think that we matter but uh yeah no I, absolutely you're absolutely right and you know you touched on something in regards to boxing that i think 
really has, has been one of the biggest indicators. Boxing, every, you know, a lot of people say boxing is dead, and it, it is. It's, it's in the U.S. Obviously, I think boxing. There's no doubt boxing's been in decline, and you can you can the first way to notice that is just by looking at regular pay cable and right. you know, seeing you know less shows on TV. But internationally, boxing is is oh, as sure. big as ever. You go to Germany, you go to France, you know, right. Africa, even things like that. Right. The shows all the time, but I think in the U.S., um, you talked about Tyson. I think that that the state of boxing, the health of boxing, by and large in the United States, has always been dictated by the strength of the heavyweight division. Right. And we just, you know, we just haven't had that dynamic, you know, overpowering, right. you know, heavyweight champion from the U.S. Um, in a long time. And and I'm going to take it one step further. And I've said this before, and I might even have said it to you, but I think that what's hurt heavyweight boxing more than anything man honestly is the money that guys get to go right from high school to uh the nba okay i think that ron artest would probably beat the shit out of half the heavyweights in the world or a guy like lebron james right probably could be the heavyweight champion in the world okay put him in boxing gloves at a young age right um you know and, and football and things like that and back in the day man a lot of kids that were coming up, whether the inner city or whatever, saw boxing as as you know a justifiable means to you know monetary success. And and, and nowadays you get faster money and easier money by playing basketball. You don't have to be good; you just have to be big. Right. Yeah, you know, that's for so, sure. You don't have to be good. And boxing is <laughs> 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 and boxing's a long, a tough, a tough road, man. Unless you like, you know, win an Olympic gold or something. Right. It's, it's a you're grinding it out, man, to get you know to that that money level. So, um, that's that's sort of my theory on boxing. But it's, okay, it's it's alive and well in the Bay Area this weekend, man. Yeah, definitely. Tell us a little bit about that. What exactly is going on in the Bay Area this weekend? We have uh, the Return of the Hurricane, which is a very unique event. Um, we're mixing World Championship boxing, amateur kickboxing, and um, and then uh, hip hop and R and B music. We have Anna uh, the Hurricane Hulatan, who is uh, the WBO Super Bantamweight Champion. She's um, uh, fighting Francesca El Cantor, who's coming in from Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, Anna is trained by Freddie Roach. Anna's a, a Filipina uh, American, and uh, you know, trained by Freddie Roach. Uh, you know, friends with the Pacquiao camp. Uh, she's huge in the Philippines. She just came back from a press tour in the Philippines. It took her 45 minutes to get from the curb at the airport back into the wow. airport. You know, to, to come back yeah. to the states. Um, she's just blown up. Uh, you know. Um, internationally and she's from daily city from the bay area and this is her first title defense uh mm. at home in the bay and so it's going to be big um i had a, the privilege of promoting her two times uh while i was was uh, in lamore at the tachi palace casino she fought for us twice and uh great girl very talented and uh we're looking forward to that and it's uh people can watch it you know on the internet if they can't come out live too. okay and how is the state of women's boxing? Are there a lot of women boxers? I mean, that that it doesn't seem like a it, it it's it's taken off. But of course, I haven't been paying attention. You know, I watched Jessica Ricosi come over right. and try to do the MMA thing that you know really didn't work out because of her ground game and whatnot. I never right. could understand why she couldn't get the hands to work. You, you know, I, I think it's just a different setup. You know, we're talking you know hands and boxing versus MMA. Um, Especially for someone like Jessica, who's had over thirty, you know, professional boxing right. matches, uh, it, it's just a completely different mind frame as, as as far as when you're setting your punches up or whatever. If you're worried about takedowns and kicks, oh, okay. kicks and things like that, but you know, overall, um, you know, women's boxing is something that I, you know, I made a commitment to a, a long time ago, and I'm trying to see that through. Um, I was fortunate to to be Jennifer Elkhorn's promoter. Right. We brought her to a couple world titles. Right. Um, you know, she was able to retire undefeated. And then Ricosi and Karina Moreno. Overall, though, I won't lie, overall, the depth in women's boxing is not right. there. It's not where it needs to be. Right. You know, in 2012, uh, women's boxing will be in the Olympics. So, so really? That, so I didn't they, know that. So that should help. That should definitely help, okay. um, you know, raise the, the profile of the sport. You know, boxing as a whole is just a, it's a great sport. It's great for kids. Um, and it's, I think, especially I, I'm the father of a teenage daughter, you know, and um, I think that it's very empowering and, and healthy for, for women to um, be able to defend himself, absolutely. Um, but also in the name of sport. So, you know, I, I'm I, I love women's boxing and definitely has a ways to go. You know, and will it ever be as big as men's boxing? No, probably not. Right. And especially in the U.S., it's just it's just not going to happen. Yeah. But there are there are athletes and there are talents such as Ana Hulatan that uh, have the ability, the talent, and the charisma 
to transcend the sport and, and help bridge the gap between everyday people and women's boxing. So that's what we look forward to uh, on Friday. And I don't think it hurts that they're really attractive women. I think, you know, as sad as it is to say, like, I started to figure out why my girlfriends back in the day used to go to all these sporting events with me. Uh (laughs) It was to look at the hot guys, but I didn't have any clue. I think she, you know, hey, she really likes that quarterback. She's a fan. Like, I had no idea she's thinking about other stuff, you know? Right. Because uh, I'm telling you, those are, I I didn't, I didn't think that you were going to get two really hot women to beat the hell out of one another, but apparently you are, and that's going to go down this weekend. (laughs) Yeah, you know, yeah, it, it turns out that Francesca and, and Anna, they're both, you know, they're both attractive, yeah. attractive girls. Um, you know, and there, there's been a lot of that in boxing. You had Mia St. John. Who, yeah. Mia came and fought at the Palace a few times, and we actually Cheska. Uh, we, we brought her, and we brought her to fight Jennifer Elkhorn yeah. when, we, um, when we brought Mayweather out here in Je- 2003. Jennifer Elkhorn's kind of mean, isn't she? Jennifer, Jennifer is, uh, she's a sweetheart. She's a sweetheart. You know, when she you talks like her. I do, if not worse. What are you talking about? I like her and all that, but well, she scares the hell out of me. She, she's, you know, she has... She has a she has a hard candy coated shell. Yeah, you know that's what she, I like to say. Yeah, love you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't beat me up. But um, yeah, I think uh, I think that it would be very entertaining to uh, to watch the women uh, box. I enjoy the uh, women's MMA a ton, but uh, I haven't been exposed to it enough. So uh, I know all about Jessica Ricosi. Obviously, you know she's been out there at the. At right. the Tachi Palace for forever. Right, right. And Jessica's going to be back in July, you know, making yeah. a commitment back to boxing. She took the MMA fights to stay busy, you know. Okay. Women, women's boxing, um, again, because of the lack of lack of depth, there really aren't as many opportunities. Um, is there a lot more money in women's boxing than there is in women's MMA? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you, but you have to you have to look internationally. Uh, for someone like okay. Jessica, sh- Jessica's. Uh, the biggest money fights are actually in Argentina, are in Germany, really, um, in France, uh, okay. Japan, things like that, um, because the sports are just are bigger over there, and it, and, uh, it has to do with television networks. You know, you don't see women on TV right. in the states, so that means that networks aren't paying for the women's fights. And uh, but in Germany, uh, you got girls like Ina Menser and you had Regina Halmich, these girls that were commanding six figure TV rights. You know, wow. deals, yeah, for their fights. It's crazy, man. That is crazy. So, um, internationally, Jessica uh, stands to make uh, a, a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't she uh, do that instead of MMA, you know? Something that she has way more confidence in. And obviously, an MMA fight versus a boxing fight, you can get just as hurt in either one. So, you might as well get paid for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so what else you got going, man? I know you've got uh, just 50, 60, 80 shows going on. I'm trying to keep track of all of them. <laughs> We got some boxing going on. We touched on uh, women's oil wrestling. What else we got on the uh, on the docket? Well, you were at uh, you were at the Tulare County Fair last year, September eighteenth, when we did the So You Think You Can Fight. Yeah, and and uh, we're definitely coming back to the Tulare County Fair. And this year it's going to be Saturday, September seventeenth. Okay. Another So You Think You Can Fight, which to me is 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 uh, a very fun event because. And you're in the fight game, right? So you probably get people hitting you up all the time, and guys at bars and gas stations or whatnot all the saying, "Oh, I can fight. I can kick right. that guy's ass. Right. I can, you know, I can punch." So him usually during like these UFC bouts, like you're watching, <laughs> oh, I can kill that guy. Right. Yeah, right. all right, bro, I have right. another beer. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so what I'm, what I, you know, what I did was, you know, over the years, I've, I've been told so many times, you know, I could do this, I can do that. Right. Okay. Well. Uh, you know, here's here it is. Yeah, here's so you think shot. you can fight? You know, I'm going to give you headgear. I'm going to give you ten ounce gloves. I'm going to give you shin guards. I'm going to put you in a three round kickboxing match. Right. One minute rounds, uh, and we'll really get to see. You know, come out. Are and they walk one the minute walk. round? They're uh, a two minute round. Two, two minute rounds. rounds. Okay. Yeah, sorry, two minute rounds. Okay. Now I went to that event last year, like you said, and what uh, what kind of tripped me out was the amount of blood. Okay, so is it? Is it that these guys aren't used to getting cracked in the face and they don't have, like, what I guess you would call a face callus? Like, it just seemed like people's faces were absolutely exploding. Like, my boy Monkey, oh, my God. He had blood all over everything. If you didn't get Monkey's blood on you at some point, you weren't sitting close enough for some reason. My camera gear was covered in it. And Monkey doesn't care. Monkey's, you know, he's got his deal going. So, um 
it, yeah. it was fun, bro. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, it's you know, um, obviously, it's no, it's no secret, man, that you know the Tough Man contest has been around forever. Right. And our door, um, you know, was a friend of mine, and I, I we did the Tough Man contest in Lamore a few years. Yeah, that's where we actually uh, discovered Levar Johnson. That's where he started, you know, punching people for a living. Yeah, I just learned that. that that's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. So um, Scott Adams, yeah, he, he found him, you know, through our Tough Man. It was pretty crazy. Um, so basically, I, I'm, I'm, but so you think you can fight is, I guess you can call it an updated version of that, you know, concept okay. of combat. But because of the sport of mixed martial arts being being so popular and everyone being into, you know, kicking and elbows right. and everything, I wanted to see, I want to get give the full stand-up experience. Right. And if people say, you know, I can fight, one thing is, I, I, for some people, it's just to prove a point whether they can fight or not. Right. But I'll be honest with you, I'm looking for talent, man. I'm looking for people that okay. I can take and I can I can then develop, um, you know, on traditional mixed martial arts, you know, shows. Okay. Such as cage combat or whatever. Um, so this is a great way for people to get in the ring um, and, and get a feel for everything. Right. Retaining amateur status. Right. Because, um, you know... Everything changes once you get punched in the head. Absolutely. You know, or you get kicked in the, in the thigh or something. Exactly. You know? So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. That's September 17th. But before September 17th, and based on the success that we enjoyed last year, we had over 1,200 people, I believe, that came out to the Tulare County Fair. And they, tried, they had tried a fight night, I believe, the year before that and, and uh, had about 400 people, from what I yeah. understand. So um, we were definitely encouraged to come back. And we were also asked... To bring, uh, so you think you can fight, to Hanford. Oh, nice! To the Kings County Fair. What? On Friday, July eighth. Get out of town. I'm getting closer to my old stomping grounds. That is tight. And, uh, so, uh, CP new presents. New venue. It's a new venue. CP presents. So you think you can fight Friday, July eighth, in Hanford at the Kings Fair? And I'm really looking forward to that. It's gonna oh, be that's going to be outstanding. All right. So, uh, is this the first time they've had fights at uh, the Kings County Fair? This is the first time. Yeah, All right. It's the first so, night at the fair. Huh. Another first for you. That's weird. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, uh, making it happen first before anybody else, and then I'm sure we're going to have all the copycats thinking that they can do whatever it is that you do next. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you just keep doing this year after year. Now, um, how do you uh, how do you market this stuff? Because I, I know last time you were up on Facebook and you were banging it out. Did you, did you think Facebook was the way to go last time with the uh, – because you had all the impressions and you were pretty geeked up yeah. about that. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, you know I, I, I definitely, as I, as I – um, and we talked about it offline a little bit. Yeah. But as, as I dig deeper into the analytics behind Facebook, you know, it's really – for a marketing, you know, professional such as, you know, yourself and yeah. myself, it's, it's really interesting. And I, I need to dig even deeper into it, but – um, that's really exciting in a way you can you can target market you know and really pinpoint um, and you know there's that that machine gun technique to marketing right you know what I mean and then exactly. but then you can sniper rifle too right through through um, a lot of the analytics that are, are uh, at your disposal on Facebook so you know I, I saw some results from it you know um, it's hard to quantify everything you know but um, I was definitely encouraged and for the cost Facebook advertising is just ridiculously right it's such a great uh, um, you know uh, uh, means of advertising uh, for the most part, though, um, you know, I have cppresents.com, which is a website that's uh, under development, thanks to you. And, and I'm, I'm going to try to, like, really yeah. get cracking on it. I've just been so swamped. But, well, you know, we we'll use cppresents.com. We'll use traditional television, radio. Um, one great thing about doing fight nights at the, at the fairs is that, you know, they run a pretty, a pretty good um, media schedule. Oh, you know, yeah. Radio and television Absolutely. and print and things like that, billboards. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, from June through September, I mean, so you think you can fight is going to be in front of everyone's eyeballs um, in the entire valley. So I expect I expect uh, great turnouts. It's a lot of fun. You were there. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, going to a professional fight is, is great, too, because you get great fights and, you know, everything's really technical and the guys are precise. And that's great. But, you know, on on. Uh, you know, on the flip side, you get two guys that are just going in there that really don't know what to expect, and they're going in on adrenaline and 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 just you know, sort of um, that that hunger and that desire to sort of give it a try, and they're going to start swinging crazy, you know. Oh yeah, and, um, just haymakers. That's a lot wild. of fun too. I'd rather either see a it really is. shitty fight or a really no, good fight. No, I, I I like the the, uh, the the lack of skill because. It reminds me of when I fought when I was out on the streets, like just wild haymakers. I was usually receiving those, not throwing those. But um, 
Yeah, it reminded me a lot of uh, you know the stuff that you'd see in high school. We run across the uh, run across the grass. <laughs> oh shit! There's a fight over by the fence. It's so and so and so and so. So they um, don't steal your hat afterwards. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So uh, that that was good times. Um, the headgear, the shin guards. Is that something that's mandatory? Is that something you have to have because they are amateurs and this is a camo event? Um, no, it's well, it's actually um, uh, not a camo event. It's through the uh, the California State Athletic Commission. Okay. So what happens with with amateur kickboxing, which is what so you think you can fight okay. falls under, is amateur kickboxers that have more than three contests or fights. Okay. It's optional to wear headgear or shin guards. Oh, okay. So like Friday, uh, at the return of the uh, hurricane. Um, at the Craneway Pavilion in Richmond, we have three amateur kickboxing matches on the card, and all three bouts are no headgear, no shin guards. Oh, okay. Because the guys have three plus fights each, so it's it. There's really no difference. Uh, uh, really, is really not much difference when when you're taking the you know the safety gear off. So, um, the, you know, the amateur status you know precludes them from being paid a purse. It's right. Really about it. So. Right, they get to get beat up for free and beat other people up. No, for free. no, um, no elbows to the head. You know, right? You can punch to the head, you can kick to the head, kick to the body. No um, ground fighting whatsoever. No, no ground fighting, no takedowns. And, and, and I think that's smart because, like, just Joe Schmo off the street. You know, any guy out of here in the bar, we've all thrown hands at, at one point or had them thrown <laughs> at us. Like, right. I don't think that's like something that we need to learn. I think that's like something that's instinctive. But, yeah, I think uh, when you start with the ground game, if some guy has got a little bit of ground game, he could pretty much wrap the field up. So uh, I, I like the fact that, you know, it's just kicking. It's just, it, it's kind of like Dan Quinn, you know, no, take, <laughs> no takedowns, four-ounce gloves, you know, uh, kicks. Uh, but, yeah, I, I really enjoy that event, and I know you guys will definitely enjoy that event if you come out. Uh, definitely good times. We'll get uh, we'll get something. You want to order something to eat? You definitely oh, can. Steph, what's good? Everything is good here. It's the press box. And while Christian decides what he's going to eat, I'm going to take this time to let you guys know about bowling for breast cancer. Okay, I'm a big fan of breast. Not a big fan of cancer, but uh, Susan G. Coleman, uh, wow. cure for the cancer, uh, hundred bucks. Uh, it's a five person team, twenty bucks a piece. It goes to a good cause, and that goes down. March 5th, and then don't forget at the press box, March 12th, 8 o'clock, come check out Blackbird Live. You can check them also out at MySpace forward slash Blackbird. I've heard of them, actually, yeah. And uh, Facebook.com forward slash Blackbird. So, uh, yeah, check that out. Live out here at the press box tonight. It's brought to you by Real Water. Check out, uh, ask your store to carry Real Water. All right, my man, we got uh, we got boxing, obviously, this weekend. We got women's oil wrestling uh, coming up. What else is uh, what else is cracking off? I know you got uh, this is well. You got the Tulare Fairgrounds. Now you got what is it? Kings. Kings. Kings Fair. Kings Fair. Yeah. Um, is that kind of kind of your game plan? Is it easier to do an event within uh, the fair schedule based on like you said? Because they have the whole marketing thing already set up. They're already. It's just like, hey, let's add this to the to the radio commercial. Makes total sense to me. You've got a bunch of walk by traffic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's definitely a built in a built in audience. And I, you know, I, what what really appealed to me um, and why I wanted to bring so you think you can fight to to the fair versus a. Uh, a traditional, you know, public use facility um, or casino or anything like that is the fact that to me, so you think you can fight it so organic, so grassroots, it's so strip away everything. It's just two guys in a ring right. just chucking them and, right. and throwing hands. And to me, that's that's sort of I don't want to get you know like uh, folksy or whatever, but that's sort of like Americana. That's like yeah. you know, it is back. Backyard, you know. Backyard, exactly. Just, just chucking them, and that, to me, what that's what is. county fairs are, man. Yeah. You know, get the family out, walk around, let the yeah. kids go on the on the uh, the 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 goats or whatever. Yeah. And, watch and out for the carnies. Get some cotton and, candy, uh, and then watch some guys beat the beat the yeah. shot of each other. So. And they definitely will. That is a that is a great event. Now, how do you decide how many fights you're going to hold? Because like I just sat through thirty fights <laughs> in the freezing cold Saturday. It was like. I, mean, I, I, I have a theory on that. Okay, yeah, because, like, you know, I sat through the Tachi Palace the other night. We had, I think, 11 bouts. Right. All of them were absolutely great fights except for the main event. I don't care who's mad at me. That main event sucked. 
But um, oh yeah, well, uh, yeah, the crow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leopoldo just kept pulling guard, right? Yeah, the uh, the mono brow was not working for him. Got to come up with that beanie, man, we bro. Gotta... That beanie was so <laughs> awesome. I can't even believe you posted that on my Facebook. I was like, that is just fucking marketing genius. The mono brow. <laughs> Beanie Ferritex could put that shit out. We need to con- we need to contact them. I don't know why they haven't done that shit already. I'll wear two of those things. I don't give a fuck. The same time. Yeah, I heard that it was a great fight. So I was watching. I was watching a lot of the stream too on um uh, you know the, on the, the website. Nice. Um, so yeah, it was definitely some good action, and uh, I was very proud of Dominique, man. Oh way putting in work. So I, I love that dude, and and even though he might not have always thought, I always did because right. you know I think it's just in his nature. He's he's a very uh, you know he's he's a straightforward straight shooter. He stands up for what he believes in, yeah, which absolutely. is himself, and and I respect that. Always have. So he and I, you know, we'd go our rounds a little bit here and there negotiating right. for fights and stuff but I've always respected that dude and always believed in his talent and to see him get a win over Gunderson man it felt good yeah yeah especially all, all the people that doubted him and whatnot. it was so awesome after he won he ran over and told John Morgan and Andre Covington I don't know what he said but I wish I did I'm going to have to find <laughs> out exactly what that's all about but he absolutely just verbally decapitated Fool's case side and then he whips around and says where's Sheer Dog I started rolling I'm like right there I'm pointing right at Jeff go tell him yeah that's look funny. for the guy in the red hat he, so. deserve, he deserves he deserves you know, he, he deserves. I would a love shot, to see man. him get the call up. I don't know what you have to do to get the call up that this guy just keeps beating, you know, guys that are coming down from the UFC. I understand they got kicked out of the UFC for a reason, but Dominic's just running through these fools and uh, he's not getting worse. He's getting better. So I, I just. I implore you, please let my man just one shot, just one time in the cage. Yeah, absolutely. You know? He's earned it. He's earned that chance. You know, they let Sean McQuirkle get in the UFC based on his underground shit. I mean, let let the fallen angel get in, too. But uh, really excited right. about that. So uh, is your event this weekend on pay-per-view? It is on uh, internet pay-per-view. Okay. It's, well, it's on television. It's actually televised. Uh, in the Philippines on TV5, and it's televised in the United States on um, a cable network called Mix, M-Y-X. Okay. Uh, so people that have you know that channel, Mix, or okay. if you're in the Philippines and watching TV5, it's like Anna, Anna's fights pull ridiculous ratings in the nice. Philippines. I mean, she's a huge, huge star over there. So um, there's going to be a lot of eyeballs, like 17 million, <laughs> I'm told, you know, households that will be wow. in. Um, but as far as people at home or around the country that want to tune in and watch some, some great fights, in addition to Anna and Francesca, we have Bruno Escalante, who's uh, a Filipino, a uh, young boxer, a, a bantamweight, another little guy. You know, He'll be in there in three kickboxing matches. Actually, one guy from Fresno I have on the card. Really? Ike, Ike Spears from Fresno Kickboxing Academy. Nice. He'll be taking on Gaston Bolanos from uh, the CSA gym up in Dublin. I never Dublin. met Ike, but if you're down with Fresno Kickboxing Academy... You're my boy, and that and uh, you, so you, people will be able to watch the webcast at uh, the website is the, the Hurricane Returns TV. Okay, and I actually have a press conference tomorrow night at seven thirty at uh, the Mink Lounge in Daly City, and that'll be uh, streamed on the on the site. Awesome, the Hurricane Returns TV, and then the weigh-ins on Thursday, and then the fight and concert on um, on Friday, and the concert features uh, Sway Pinala Pinala, who was on American Idol from here too, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the Fresno boy. So, yeah. Um, Nump Trump, the whole 454 Life Entertainment people, Drew Deasy. I mean, just some, you know, really, really, really good hardcore rap, too. So, nice. Now, it's uh, a lot of fun. Now, I know you've done a lot of promoting and whatnot. It seems like you're only doing the boxing and the MMA and the women's oil wrestling. Are you going to be getting into any entertainment? Will you be uh, doing any concerts or anything like that? Or are you kind of over that? Um, well, I, I helped. Uh, Last year we brought Aaron Lewis back right to the Visalia Fox, so right. we did that. You know, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely I'm looking at opportunities, and okay. it's it's you know how business is, man. Yeah. when you're doing things, you know, it's uh, if it makes sense, right? So if Absolutely, the right, if the right opportunity it presents itself. Um, definitely, and I'd like to bring some local music back to the scene and do some shows. Um, so you know, we'll see. Do you just get bored doing the same thing every time, and you just got to change it up and do something different just to just to keep you interested? Uh that's a good question, man. You know, I think in large part, yeah, I think I do. I think I do have ADD or whatever. I think I do sort you. of get bored easily. I, I like challenges, and yeah. I, I'd rather, you know, I think it's because I did what I was doing so long under the casino in the casino environment that you just sort of get. You, it's it just becomes humdrum. You know what I mean? Right. You just want to try to do different things. So and, and see if it, and some things will work and some won't, but. 
you know, it's just like when you're a kid and someone says, here, you know, try this food and you're like, right. oh, I don't like it. Well, you don't know right. if you like it till you, you try till it. You, try it. you don't exactly. know if it's going to work till you try it. So, um, you know, yeah, I just keep keep trying, you know, but I, I, I'm definitely starting to zero in on what people are responding to. And, and uh, you know, I'll focus on that, but always try to try to make it different and, and change it up because otherwise people get bored. If you keep trying to feed people the same things over and over, especially in this economy, man, we're, we're in, you know, uh, we're in a recession, man. Right. So every dollar that people spend, um, you know, they have to think more about it. And, and I value that, you know, as a, you know, a father of three, you know, I, I money gets tight. Yep. So I want to make sure that I do everything I can to, to give people events that, you know, they'll feel comfortable and they'll feel happy about spending, you know, their hard earned and hard saved, you know, money on. So that'll never change. Yeah, it looks like you did a pretty good job of that at the women's oil wrestling. That thing was absolutely packed. You had the VIP tables going on. It wasn't bad for a Tuesday night. No, it, Larry, you know. Yeah, and uh, it, that's that's the other thing. It's like Tuesday night. Like, who the hell has a huge event like that on a <laughs> Tuesday night? The yeah. answer is you. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was very impressed with that. At first, I was a little concerned. I'm like, man, you know, like, people got to go to work the next day. Man, all that <laughs> shit was out the window. People showed up like, hey, let's party until they close this thing. And they did. Uh, Kalen and whatnot up on the uh, ones and twos. That was uh, definitely a good time. All yeah, right. it was a lot of fun, man. All right, so uh, if if you had your choice of anything to promote, what would it be? Would it be boxing or MMA? What 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 excites you the most? It's boxing, huh? You know what? I mean, boxing has my heart. Boxing had my okay. heart at a very early age. I remember sitting around my uncle Tony's house back on 60th Street in Niagara Falls, New York, and you know watching you know uh, boxing on on um, you know worldwide of sports and yeah. everything and Sugar Ray and. And, and um, you know, all those guys. So, you know, Hagler and Hearns and all that stuff. So, y- you know how it is, man. You know, if something something gets you and gets inside you at a young right. age, you know, you always want to go back to it and honor it. Um, M- MMA definitely is a passion of mine. You know, boxing is like sentimental favorite. Right. I would love to really uh, continue to help be a part of, of sustaining boxing, um, but helping it grow. And, and um, in, in, in line with that, what I also have coming up, on Saturday because like you mentioned I always have things going on yeah so Friday I'm in Richmond for Return of the Hurricane right. professional boxing then I leave very early Saturday morning and I come back to Tulare okay to the Tulare County Fairgrounds where I'm helping Richard Torres and the, and the Manuel Torres Foundation okay and the Tulare Athletic Club put on the Central California Golden Gloves Tournament Oh, okay. So amateur boxing, this is the kids, this is the yeah. youth, this is the future generation of the sport. Okay, now tell me about Golden Gloves, because I always hear about this kid was a Golden Gloves champ, et cetera, and so forth. What the hell exactly is Golden Gloves? What is that? It's it's, am- it's That is the amateur boxing? Uh, well, there's there's other, it's, it's uh, amateur boxing is amateur boxing, right? And Golden okay. Gloves is sort of, a, imagine a brand. Okay. Just like in MMA, you have your, your gladiator challenges, your right. cage combats, okay. your... Tachi Palace and stuff. So Golden Gloves, though, is is the oldest, uh, basically, and like sort okay. of most distinguished yeah. uh, tournament uh, in the United States. Yeah, I've never seen it, but I mean, I recognize the name. Everybody, you know, that's like uh, a staple. Like, if you're a Golden Gloves champ, like, well, obviously, you were the man. I've had friends yeah. that said, you know, I came in third, I came this, Golden Gloves, and I'm taking, man, that's the dude I don't want to <laughs> get all lippy with. Yeah, yeah, it's a really prestigious tournament, and, you know, it goes by regions. So this, okay. is, the, this is the Central California region, um, and Richard Torres and his family, his father, Manuel Torres, I mean, I, I believe it's, and I could be wrong, but it's something like 60 years. Wow. That the Torres family has been, um, you know, behind amateur boxing and, and, and helping it to, to thrive and stay alive here in Tulare in Central California. So you have a lot of great uh, talent, um, you know, in Fresno and Bakersfield and, and uh, Avenal and Huron and right. Visalia. So um, they're all going to come out Saturday. Doors open at 4 p.m. at the Tulare County Fairgrounds. And the fights start at 5 p.m. Nice. And uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, there's, there's um, you, know, you know, young kids is, you know, like you might see eight-year-olds, seven-year-olds yeah. in there. And yeah. It's, it's, it's great to see them because boxing, you know, teaches kids discipline, honor, respect, you know, proper nutrition um, and, and, and hard work and things like that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. That's that's uh, coming up on Saturday. So tickets are only ten dollars in advance. Oh, good. That. All the t- all the ticket donations, all the ticket money goes to the Manuel Torres Resource Center, which, help, which helps uh, needy families and kids and stuff. Oh, that's and to Larry. good. 
um, and the Tulare Athletic Club. So it's a, it's a great cause and it's a good time. And I'll be there serving beer. So come out, have nice. have a Bud Light, you know, and uh, CP presents the beer on yeah. Saturday. Tip your bartender. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's uh, that's fantastic. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, to all these events coming up. I don't know where you find the time to do this. I mean, seven o'clock in the morning. I know you're at Snap Fitness, going into beast mode. I see it up on Facebook all the time. Um, you've always got something going on, my man. Um, I wake up at four o'clock, about four. Is that is that right? Between four and five a.m. Uh, yeah, and I, it's funny because um, a lot of the people that I deal with are East Coast. Yeah, and I was going to say that. They get in that. their office like 7 or whatever, yeah. so I get up, I check my email. So that's what's up. Okay, so then, you can uh, do that. Sometimes I can go back to sleep, but a lot of times I just can't. Yeah, I'd love to get up that early, too, because like most of the people around here aren't bothering me yet. So I've got, <laughs> I've got you know, a couple, I at least got four hours before like a phone call comes in with some stupid. I used to come home that time wow of the day and now it's like i you know that's that's when i i wake wow, up wow that must have been a, that must have been and, uh, know, so been good times right there i'm getting i'm getting old man yeah well i am old so uh you know i'm older, I'm older than you i think i know but you, i look older than <laughs> you so it doesn't matter I, I feel older than you so all right so boxing is going down uh what else you got for me my man um that's it, huh? Yeah, I'm, no, shit, that's it. Yeah. All right, so that's we got it. uh we got women's oil wrestling. When when's that when's that date? That, oh, the next WoW event's going to be in August. I don't have the okay. exact, exact date yet, but it's And we be, don't know where or we're doing um, Tulare no, again. It's 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 uh I'm not sure. It's Tulare, Fresno or somewhere in the middle. Oh shit, One if it's those. in Fresno, I may lose my <laughs> damn mind. I won't even wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're literally still, wow. It's, it's still it still looks sort of in negotiation, but um, I'm definitely looking at it. Tulare County Fairgrounds is great partners, um, and I love bringing events there. But at the same time, I'd like to you know expand my footprint you know as well throughout the rest of the valley. So, um, and even Southern California. Okay. You know, so yeah, we'll, that's we'll what see. I was going to say. You, uh, are you looking to take the event uh, out of the area? Because it seems like you know we're kind of. I mean, I'm down for our area. It's less for me yeah. to drive. Um, yeah, potentially. I've had I actually okay. had a talk recently with a uh, a southern california casino okay um so yeah we'll see what we'll see what develops there okay fantastic well i guess uh that's pretty much going to wrap up this edition of the real mma hour as christian printup gets his dinner here the beautiful stephanie if you guys have never been out to the press box come out to the press box uh absolutely fantastic place to watch sports fantastic place to uh to eat Everybody here is cool. So uh, if you see one of the owners like Tom or the manager, Eric, or my boy Greg, the general manager here, tell them Mott sent you. We will definitely be here for the UFC uh, 27. Uh, Tickets are uh, $10 in advance or $15 the day of the event. Please support all local MMA. I want to shout out to Eddie at Visalia MMA Gear for always taking care of Cage Radio. Supporting dude right there. Yeah, supporting everybody. Uh, I know uh, you're you're good with Eddie. We're all good with Eddie. You're the man, Eddie. Truly appreciate everything you do for local MMA. And uh, I want to shout out to Bruce at Real Water. Thank you, my man, for sponsoring the show. So next week, uh, if the project's back in town, we'll drag his pasty ass back here on the air. And uh, got some new toys, huh? I, I uh, I've deduced from the Facebook that uh, there could be some uh, possible aftermarket installations going on in Palo Alto as we speak right now. Yeah, yeah there yeah. could be a fun bag alert. <laughs> I'm just saying, there could be. So. Um, just make eye contact with her. That's all I'm saying. Just oh, yeah, yeah, eye yeah. contact works for the rest of the of the girls chin as well. Up. Chin up. <laughs> chin up. I, eyes only. All right. Oh, look eye. Oh, look eye. <laughs> yeah, like Mr. Miyagi. So, all right. Well, that's pretty much going to do it. Christian, I appreciate you coming out, my man. Thank you, bro. Uh, support uh, local MMA. Check out uh, Christian's Facebook page. What is your Facebook page? Forward slash what? Uh, forward slash CP Presents. Okay. And uh, that's definitely where you go to find all the news on the, on the, on the shows and win tickets and things like yeah. that. And for people that are going to want to compete, men and women, and so you think you can fight, right. you're definitely going to want to uh, click like on that uh, CP Presents Are you telling page. me we're going to have some women possibly this time? Oh, I, I definitely want women this year. That would be rad. Oh yeah, yeah, I definitely want women in an event this year. I, I demand some women step up, yeah, and 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 get in there and and 
knock the shit out of someone. I agree. Even if it's another dude, we don't even care. Just come out. And then uh, can I expect the beautiful Shanna Star to uh, be a ring card girl, please? I, I couldn't have an event that okay. you would attend without having Shanna there. The, it is yeah. the ring card girl to which all other ring card girls shall be measured against. All right. Well, that's pretty much going to do it. Again, I want to thank Christian Printup. Check out CP Presents. Uh, women's oil wrestling, just absolutely insane events that uh, you will definitely have an awesome time at, and uh, they're very affordable. He doesn't try to price you out of the building. He tries to price it so you're in the building, absolutely. and we truly appreciate that. And, Our, and the uh, the fair events, your ticket includes fair admission. Yeah, which is, uh, yeah. I mean, like, that's so awesome. It's like yeah. I don't have to pay separately an extra 10 bucks because uh, – I've seen some events. They're like, hey, pay your 14 bucks, and then for an additional $10, no, not right, for an additional right. $10, you know. But, uh, yeah, a lot of value uh, for the dollar, definitely. All right, that's going to wrap it up for Christian Printout, for, for Mots, for the real MMA Hour. Good night now. <laughs>